So I've had my Creality Falcon 2 now, the 22 watt laser for about a week. I've had a chance to do a few uh, different projects with the machine and I'm super happy with it. Uh, this thing is pretty incredible with what it's able to do. Um, so what I'm hoping to do today is uh, do a little video regarding glass engraving. That's something completely new to me. I was never able to do with the little laser engraver that I had previously. So I was able to try a little project this week I'd like to take you through. So I'm down here in my uh, basement workshop. Um, so right now it's a temporary setup. We're in the process of renovating our entire basement. So hopefully we can walk you through that process as well, which will eventually consist of a complete dedicated area for our laser engraving, as well as a woodworking shop for the other uh, woodworking projects that we do. But first I want to talk about the rotary attachment. Now Creality makes a um, two different ro rotary attachments actually for their Falcon. They have the regular rotary bed, um, but as well as the Rotary Pro, which is very similar to this. Uh, I have the X tool. Um, this is the RE2 rotary. Um, so it's something I already had. I was using it with my other uh, little, small little laser engraver that I had. Um, so if you were wondering if you can connect an X tool RE2 Pro to the Creality Falcon 2, the answer is yes. Now, at first glance, when you look at the wiring for the rotary versus the motor on the y-axis on the Falcon 2, you'll notice the rotary has a four pin output, whereas the attachment onto the stepper motor for the y-axis on the Creality is a six pin. Um, so I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do this or not. But when I looked into the original packaging I had for my X-Tool RE2, uh, I did have a couple of adapters. So I came with two um, four to six pin wiring adapters. Um, they are a little different in the sense that the one adapter, the wires were completely straight, pin to pin. Um, then there was one adapter where the two middle wires, I don't know if you can see this, if that'll focus or not, but the two middle wires actually crisscross. So they start flat and then they get crossed right in the middle there to opposite pins. Uh, I wasn't sure which one to use. Uh, so I started with the purely straight connector and the rotary did not work. It kept binding and didn't want to work at all. Switched my adapters and it worked perfect. So yes, you can use the X-Tool rotary with the Creality. Uh, Creality's rotary attachments that they make look very similar to this. Their, their pro rotary tool uh, looks very similar to this with the chuck. Um, so I'm sure it's a great product as well. This is the one I already had. So I went ahead and tried some different projects this week with glass engraving. Again, I said it was new to me. Um, so I did a bit of research, of course. Uh, how do you get a diode laser to engrave on glass? Um, glass, of course, being transparent, the diode would naturally want to shine right through it. So when I researched it, I came across many different ways that people are accomplishing this. Uh, many people are using wet paper towels, covering their glass with a wet paper towel, engraving through that. Um, some people are using dish detergent, smearing some on before they engrave. Uh, that seemed to have some decent results. Cardstock, black cardstock is another thing that people use pretty often. Uh, painter's tape. I've seen people use regular masking tape. I've seen people use painter's tape and then black it out with a Sharpie. Uh, I even found some specialized laser tape, like a blue laser tape. It looks like a thin, almost transparent tape that people use. Uh, but probably the most common way you're going to find is simple acrylic paint. Um, so people brush it on, they'll roll it on, or they'll spray it on. So what I did, I went with what I had. I went into our arts drawer, found a little bit of acrylic paint, and I just decided to brush it onto the glass and to see what kind of results I could get. So very quickly, here's some of the glasses I did. And we'll kind of take you through the process of what I did a little bit, um, the results I got, um, and if I was happy with that or not. So stay tuned. We'll uh, go through that process right now. So here's a little project my wife wanted me to do. She's having a mother-daughter get-together 
that she's hosting in a couple weeks. So they look like little shot glasses, but they're actually candle holders, mini candle holders. So here's uh, the process I decided to use. I actually just went in our art drawer, found some black acrylic paint, the, probably my daughter's. And I uh, just used a little paintbrush and I brushed the glass. Now the acrylic paint sticks pretty well. So I just brushed it, tried to get it as even as possible um, and let it dry fully before I attempted this. Uh, the one thing I'll suggest if you are going to brush on your paint is to try to get it as even as possible. Um, you, you won't be able to fully get it even with a brush because there will always be brush marks, but just try to get it on as even as possible. Try not to get it too thick in some spots and too thin in other spots. Um, that would give you your best results. So that's what it looked like after it was dry for me. This one's already engraved as well, but uh, you can kind of see the, the black paint that I brushed on there. The other issue I want to talk about is the size of these candle holders. So they're quite small. They're about the size of a shot glass. Um, because they were so small, the issue I ran into is that my rotary chuck would always get in the way of my laser module. So there would always be some interference there um, because the glass was so small, uh, the laser module is quite large. Um, so when I wanted to try to center the engraving on the glass, it would always interfere. The chuck would always interfere with the module. So you can see what I adapted there. I just found a cardboard tube that was just the right size to wedge inside the shot glass just to extend it out a little bit. And uh, that gave me the clearance I needed to be able to do this engraving without any interference. Um, the rotary tools do come with different adapters. Um, you know, they come with adapters to grab the cylindrical object from inside. You can cra uh, clasp it from the outside. It comes with uh, metal fingers or prongs that you could use for if you're doing ring engraving. Um, those probably would have worked for these candle holders if they weren't tapered. But uh, it's hard to tell in the picture, but the glass is a tapered glass, so those uh, metal fingers wouldn't actually grip it properly. So I had to resort to this. Uh, it worked out perfect. Um, I did run into one little issue that we'll talk about there shortly. But uh, so you can see um, the brushed on candle holder, the paint that's brushed on it, and the engraving turned out quite nice. Um, so that was at 100% power, 2000 millimeters per minute. Um, the one thing I did find with my first attempt, it looks pretty decent, um, but I think the 100 power was way more than what I needed. When you feel inside the glass, you can actually feel that this etched all the way through this engraved right through the glass so it's rough on the inside as well as the outside and it's quite thick glass so i think it's a lot more power than i needed um, so i did change my power settings as i went along i'll show you uh, some of the lower powered ones i did as well this was some of the final um, engravings that i did so each and every one of them they're different power settings they all looked really good the only thing I noticed is because of the setup I had to do with that cardboard tube inside the cup is that inside the cardboard actually burned to the etched glass on the inside. So it did leave a little bit of marking. Uh, you can see in the, the name Ava here, the inside etch that's inside the glass. You can see it's a little bit browner than the outside etch. Um, so in the future, I would do something to avoid that um, but I mean overall for our purposes and doing these engravings I'm really happy with the turnout considering it was just brushed on acrylic paint first time attempting this I think it turned out pretty good they look good they're very clear um, got the nice frosted look that I was looking for uh, the other thing I came across I'll mention now when I was looking at you know how to prepare your glass for laser engraving uh, there was one process of titanium dioxide powder and a rubbing alcohol mixture. I believe it was three parts alcohol to one part uh, titanium dioxide powder. And if you make your solution with that and spray it on or brush it on or roll it on, um, apparently you'll get a much 
kind of a smokier engraving. It'll be almost like a black engraving on the glass. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. I haven't actually attempted it, but I, I am looking forward to trying that. So we'll look very quickly at uh, the engraving process. Um, I'll show you a short clip of what it looked like as I was engraving it. And then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of my results and maybe some suggestions and some learning lessons that I, I found. So here's a little clip of the actual engraving process that I did. So this was my first attempt. Uh, so you can see the black paint on the glass and the etching came out very nice. Um, like I said, I was overall very happy with the results. You can see the setup I had here with the cardboard tube inside the glass. Um, so the one thing I will mention, um, I touched on it a little bit, is that as this was engraving, um, because the cardboard was inside the glass and it made contact to the engraving a little bit inside, um, there were some burn marks, a little bit of burn residue that kind of got stuck into the engraving on the inside of the glass. Um, it cleaned up pretty good. It's not super noticeable, uh, but it is definitely there. So in the future, although this setup worked really good for my application, and I mean, the, the results were great for what I intend to use these for, in the future, I would try to avoid this. If I was doing this for a customer, I'd try to figure out a way to not have that cardboard inside the glass touching the etching because it definitely did leave a little bit of residue, but um, it worked out great. And um, so at my first attempt, especially, um, I did find the power was a little high, so I did come down on the power a little bit, but it still looked really good. So another quick thing I wanted to mention regarding using a rotary tool is it does matter how you orient this inside your your machine, whatever kind of machine you're using. Uh, so one thing I learned is, you know, because I was engraving on a candle holder, this could be a glass, any kind of a cylinder, because you want what you're engraving, you know, to be upright when the glass is upright, when I have my rotary tool sitting inside the frame of the Falcon 2, in this orientation right here. So the stepper motor is on the right hand side and I'm in line with my X axis. Then when I'm in my preview mode in Lightburn, when I have my workspace and my text or logo, whatever it is I want to put on there, set up in Lightburn, I want it to look exactly like that. I want that name to be written in this orientation and that's the way it will print just as if I was looking at the light burn screen right there. The issue and the lesson I learned, I guess, is at one point I had to have my rotary tool like this inside the frame. So now with the stepper motor on the left hand side, you know, I didn't really give it much thought, but when I was printing, everything was turning out mirror mode. It's like everything printed completely as if I was looking at it in the mirror and I couldn't figure out why. So it does matter which way you have this oriented inside your frame. Um, otherwise, if you know that it's going to print mirror mode, you can always select that option to make sure it prints mirrored so that it actually shows normal when you're, you have your finished product. But overall, I was pretty happy with this first little attempt at laser engraving glass. Um, so here's the first one I did. This was at 100% power, 2,000 millimeters per minute. Um, the etching looks pretty good. I mean, it's a little darker than, say, this one. This is the, one of the last ones I did. This was at 37.5% power. Um, so again, very clear. I do think this one is a little bit better. It's a little more white. This one is a little more gray. So probably because of the too much power. Um, so I do like the look of this one a little better. This was still 2,000 millimeters per minute, just lower power, 37 and a half. I could probably lower that power even more. I'm still getting engraving right through the glass. Maybe that's normal, I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably learn a little bit more of that as I continue this. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is when you look really closely at the engraving, 
you can see a little bit of variation almost like stripes through and that would be caused most likely by brushing on the paint so those brush lines that you'll always see using a paintbrush you can make them out a little bit in the engraving it's not noticeable at all if you were just looking at that you know it looks pretty good but upon close inspection you definitely do see it um, so I would probably suggest rolling or spray painting um, when I did a little more research of how people do this, most people will use the spray paint because it goes on very even. You will avoid those brush lines. But I think, uh, yeah, overall, I'm super happy with this end result. Um, this machine is going to, like I said, be able to be a lot more versatile for what we're looking to do. So we'll probably end up doing a lot more glass engraving. I didn't go through the process of setting up a rotary tool for the machine. Um, there's lots of videos out there that explain it. Um, for the most part, they're plug and play. Uh, you, you, know, you plug your rotary into your Y axis of your whatever machine you have. Um, but you do have to set the millimeters per rev revolution of your specific tool. Um, so for instance, with my X tool, it's set for 160.14 millimeters per revolution per full 360 degree revolution. I'm not sure what it is for the Creality tool. Each manufacturer would have a specific setting that you have to enter. Um, if you want me to make a video on that, I can. You can leave your a comment stating such. But I mean, there's lots of information out there and it's pretty easy to set up in Lightburn itself. Um, the other thing to remember is within Lightburn, when you're using a rotary tool, make sure you have your rotary tool enabled. When you go back to using the normal XY axis for whatever machine you're using. Make sure you disable the rotary tool. You're going to see a lot of strange results if you don't. You know, circles that aren't looking like circles and similar things to that. But yeah, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe. Um, and let's follow uh, Creality 3D behind the scenes. Um, look forward to a lot more videos coming as well. I think my next video, I'm going to deal a little more with some of the wood projects we're working on and uh, using the cutting functions uh, as well as the engraving functions as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.